Hey everybody, before we start the show, I wanted to let you know about Monte Cook Games and their amazing product, Numenera. That's right, Numenera is an amazing game from Monte Cook, one of the greatest game designers of all time. He worked on a bunch of awesome stuff, and Numenera might be the cream of the crop, which is high praise. Right now, Numenera is having a Kickstarter that is fully funded and blowing through all of its stretch goals for new core rulebooks. This is not a new edition of the game. If you've already got Numenera, this is just more goodness you can add on. Numenera Discovery is a fresh take on the existing core rulebook. You'll get some revisions and some updates and some new ideas added to the game. Numenera Destiny gives you things to do with all of the new discoveries in Numenera Discovery. You'll have new ways to structure campaigns, you'll discover new materials, power sources, and treasures that you can utilize in totally original and robust ways. Numenera is an amazing game. You are going to want to absolutely check it out and play it because it's just so awesome. So anyway, check out Numenera, all right? Do it right now. Check it out uh, and head on over to mymcg.info slash DST podcast. That's mymcg, like Monte Cook Games, dot info slash DST podcast. Check it out. Donate to this Kickstarter. You will be happy you did. There's going to be so many rewards, it's mind-boggling. This is Tabletop Babble. I'm James Intracasso. Today on the show, we've got some amazing guests. We're talking to the Podcasts of Annihilation Dungeon Masters. If you don't know what the Podcasts of Annihilation are, you're about to find out. It was a week-long event uh, that Wizards of the Coast inspired and made with a bunch of actual play podcasts, including our own Venture Maidens podcast right here on the Don't Split the Podcast Network. It's very exciting, and it all relates to their Tomb of Annihilation Right now, recently released storyline for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. So, we are going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the adventure. We're going to be talking about the podcast. It's going to be amazing. My guests are, of course, Celeste Conowich from The Venture Maidens. We're talking to Josh from Taking Initiative, Joe from You Meet in a Tavern, and Lauren from Dungeons Drunks. So, check it out. Out. This is going to be a great podcast. I'm so excited and I can't wait to share it with you. So I won't. Here it is. Okay, everybody. Now I am here with four of the world's greatest dungeon masters. Super duper excited to be talking with everybody here. Uh, let's go around in the table and uh, we'll have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, and we'll start with a person uh, who is known to this podcast audience Celeste Conowich, who are you, and what do you do in the world of tabletop role-playing games? Hey, everybody. My name is Celeste. Uh, From this network, I am the Dungeon Master on the Venture Maidens podcast, an actual play uh, non-dude 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. (laughs) So, uh, that's me. Hello. Yes. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome to have you here. And uh, new to Tabletop Babble, uh, but certainly not new to podcasting, as all of our guests are podcast pros, uh, we have Lauren Urban from Dungeons and Drunks, or Dungeon Drunks, I guess would be the best yes. way to put it, right? Yeah, yeah. we drunks. used to be Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks and decided that ampersands were really difficult to deal with in a URL, so shortened, <laughs> we're now just Dungeon Drunks. Mm-hmm. I often go by Elbow Crazy, and I'm the DM of that crazy group. And I'm super happy to be here. That's awesome. I'm super happy to have you here. And I am also super duper happy to uh, have the one and only Joe PB here. Wait, PB? I'm calling you peanut butter? (laughs) DB. DB. Whatever. It's Joe Della Bella. It's a weird name. I understand. You can call me whatever you want. (laughs) So, uh, Joe, why don't you tell the people out there who you are and what you do in the world of tabletop role-playing games? Uh, Yeah, my name is Joe, and I'm the dungeon master and um, editor and producer and all that good stuff of the You Meet in a Tavern podcast. So, really excited to be here. Excellent. Really excited to have you here. Uh, And I'm very excited to have also our final guest here, Josh Perot. 
How are you? Yes. How's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on? Uh, who are you and what do you do in the world of tabletop role-playing games? Well, I'm Josh Perot. I am the DM and finishing editor for the Taking Initiative podcast. We kicked off in the beginning of the year, and we are currently now going through the podcast of Annihilation, which is a little thing that's going on about now. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. What a great segue, because uh, that's really what we're You're here to welcome. talk about, is the podcast of Annihilation. So you all uh, have podcasts that are sort of involved in this podcast of Annihilation initiative. We're going to hear some amazing adventures. In fact, we've already started to, and you, the listening audience, can check out all of them now by going to various podcast feeds and, and checking them out. Podcast of Annihilation, of course, center around the Tomb of Annihilation story that Wizards of the Coast just released for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Celeste, we got to talk to you the day the announcement happened at Gen Con, uh, which was super awesome and amazing. I was watching my phone, like, just seeing when I could possibly, like, tell people about this. I I had sent, like, cryptic emails, like, around, like, okay, guys, like, just be ready. Like, I'm going to be really busy, and there might be a cool thing, but I can't talk to you about it. It was infuriating. (laughs) It honestly, the announcement we're all came sitting so around. late. <laughs> so oh, late. Yeah. Oh, I'll sit around in Slack going, now? No. Yeah, like now? texting each other no. like, okay, come on, it's got to be like soon, right? <laughs> release, 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 go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is incredible. It's uh, And it was it could not have timed out better for us it, because it happened like pretty much moments before our live panel we were about to do at Gen Con. Right, at Gen Con. Uh, So I finally got to burst with glee in front of a room of captive people, (laughs) which was great. (laughs) That was excellent. That was excellent. So it was so fun to be there and to sort of be part of that announcement when Celeste got to announce that to everybody. For the rest of you, let's talk about, like, how did you feel when this came about? You know what I mean? Like, how, how did it come about, actually? Because uh, I hear we have somebody here who brought it to the one and only Greg Tito. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Josh? Yeah. So it basically happened right after the stream of Annihilation happened. I was hanging out with uh, Will of Encounter Roleplay on his stream, talking about the stream of Annihilation right afterwards, going over the module and Xanathar's Guide to Everything and all the really cool stuff that was going on. And I remember watching some of the stream going, man, that's cool. I like seeing all these groups getting to interact with each other, like Mercers with the Girls Guts Glory people. And then you have the Dragon Friends in there and the Yogg's cast and everyone's doing all these things together because that's what D&D is. It's getting together with your friends and just having fun and being able to just enjoy each other's company. And that really hit home for me. So about Five o'clock in the morning, because I was still working evenings, I was laying in bed and popped up and went, podcast, though. What about <laughs> what about podcasts? <laughs> I'm in a podcast. <laughs> I want to play. I want to play with these people. <laughs> Why not me? Why not all these other people? So then I went to sleep. And then Monday morning, I woke up and go, yeah, you know what? That was a really good idea. I'm going to do something with that. No idea what that was, though. But I was going to do something with that. So I hopped into work the next day, and the other players from my group, Bucky, Drew, and Nick, they all work with me. And Bucky and Drew, I walked into their office, and I was just kind of standing there for a while. And Bucky's like, what, dude? You have something to say. Just say it. (laughs) I went, I have an idea. It's a big one, though. And if it actually happens, we got a lot of work ahead of us. (laughs) (laughs) And Bucky and Drew said, okay, shoot. And I explained it and they said, that's great. Go do it. And then after some discussion figured, I'm just going to tweet wizards because why not? So I went back to my room and I paced around the little room and I typed it up and then I backspaced and I typed it up and I backspaced. And then I just (laughs) kind of put my head down on my hands and I eventually had something that I was okay with. Mm -hmm. Uh, And right before I sent it, I talked to Will from Encounter Roleplay and Joel from uh, D&D is for Nerds and said, hey, if you guys are interested in doing this, let me know because I will take you and make you part of my pitch because why not show that other people are involved? Totally. And they went, oh, yes, please. So they were all on board. So after not hearing back from Wizards for like a week, I said, you know what? When the module comes out, we can just do it ourselves, you know, just do our own Pods of Annihilation, which is what I called it. It's now Podcast of Annihilation. And then Bucky and Drew said, why not Greg Tito? 
Mm-hmm. And I said, that's a good, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So I messaged Greg and Greg's like, great idea. Here's my email. Send it to me. I went, Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, this, oh, 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 no, this really, <laughs> so I said to Dan, we had a call, we talked it out. We, we got through all the elements and he was wondering how we were going to get everyone together to stream. And I said, no, just have it in our element. Like we, mm-hmm. we have something special that we created. It's this edited, not really improv live right at the moment play. Uh, some of us do. Hi, Celeste. Uh, <laughs> but uh, not all of us have this this availability for streaming. We have this other product. Like as a beautiful example, it's God's Fall and the Dungeon Rats. Mm-hmm. Like they're very curated, right. gorgeous production value, which I'm like, no way they would want to be part of this. <clears throat> they are. <laughs> uh, so after we talked about it, we said, cool, you reach out to some people. I'll reach out to some people. We'll get people together. So I reached out to uh, Celeste and to Joe, who I really didn't talk to yet uh, up until that point. But I said, Wizards thing, come hang out and play. (laughs) Then they were like, yes. And I also reached out to Will and uh, Joel. And we got some groups together. Greg reached out to Lauren and the other groups that were involved uh, on the other half of the spectrum. And yeah, it's it's now a thing. We got the modules early and planned our own adventures and i could not be happier with how this all went this has been an amazing experience and yeah. i give a lot of credit and love to wizards for how they care about their community mm-hmm. and what they did for us because you know some of us were the low people on the totem pole and they just took it and ran with it and we're, we're getting some exposure and getting to play with people that we've listened to for years and then it's been an amazing experience. Absolutely. And I, I think it's safe to say that all of you make Dungeons & Dragons a fun thing to do. You know what I mean? You're you're out there, whether or not it is your intent, you are also marketing the game Dungeons & Dragons to your listeners and to your audience. And the fact that you all sound like you're having a good time and uh, are just making the audience have a blast, I think really helps them out as well. And so it is nice to see that sort of cohesive relationship happening. And I think Wizards gets a bad rap sometimes. It's like they're they're under so much scrutiny as the biggest fish in the pond when it comes to role-playing games that that they get a pretty bad rap whenever they do anything that, like, one person dislikes. Uh, And so uh, (laughs) I have to say I think this and a lot of things they've done are, are examples of how much they do care about the community. And the fact that you brought this to them is amazing. I am so glad that I'm going to have all of this wonderful uh, story and amazing content to listen to. Uh, Lauren, let's talk a little bit. At what point did you get involved and, like, what was your reaction to this whole thing? Oh, it's super easy. Greg emailed and said, hey, are you interested in in having Dungeon (laughs) Drunks do this thing? And I went, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I hadn't even gotten halfway through the email before I was already composing a reply going, this sounds fantastic. Yes, please. (laughs) And it it was super easy to to get my players on board. I said, we're going to do something awesome. And they went, okay. So I, I had the easy part in all of this. I got to just say yes and have fun. And then it was, how much can I do now how how many things can we get involved with how many projects can we do how can i meet all these new awesome people that some of whom i hadn't heard of before some of whom i had <laughs> some of whom i'd listened to their podcasts it's been super awesome and my my job was super easy i just said yes a lot that's awesome <laughs> let's so in fact i want to i want to pick out something you said specifically where you said how much can we do, which I think is a great thing because we, you know, there's this schedule, everybody's putting out uh, at least one episode that sort of relates to the Tomb of Annihilation and they're telling their story, but there's more than that happening, right? There are other things going on. I I believe I saw some pictures Mm -hmm. tweeted of some DM games happening, right? (laughs) Of all the DMs of the various podcasts getting together and stuff. Yeah. Well, I think Josh... Because he took the stream of Annihilation and said, we want to do that except for podcasts. We all kind of took a lot of the ideas from that, like playing in each other's games, like having a DM game and where a whole bunch of DMs sit down and, and get to play in a one shot. And that's, that happened. 
That was, <laughs> we don't know when it's coming out and it was amazing and it was incredible. Lauren and, yeah, ran Lauren it has. and it was, it was such a good time. We were all a bit, I, I won't even talk about it, but it was amazing. Um, so much credit. How much I want to give away. So good. <laughs> it was, it was super fun. I, DMing for a bunch of experienced DMs is something that I think every DM out there needs to have that joy and that terror of uh-huh. I am going to run for for a whole bunch of people who are going to be super sympathetic to me, but are, who are also probably way more knowledgeable about doing this than I am. But everybody just wants to have fun and know knows how to do that. It is it is so amazing and so. Being able to to play in one of those games and then being able to DM one of those games, that's that was special. And I, I can't wait for that episode to come out. The whole <laughs> time like, when I was editing yeah. it, it just made me giggle. It was like herding cats, really. <laughs> it was kind of like herding <laughs> several cats. Yeah, now that you mention it. Hmm. <laughs> Speaking of cats, I just listened to the, um, the Taking Initiative episode uh-huh. that went of... With several tabaxi in them. <laughs> yes. That made me laugh. Oh, Adam and Joel were <laughs> such a joy to have. They played two tabaxi brothers for who, whoever has not listened to the episode yet. They just riffed off each other so well. And Nick from our group. Nick is the one who introduced Drew, Bucky, and I to uh, Sans Pants Radio years ago. So Nick getting to play with these people he's listened to for years was amazing. And he just fit right in. And it mm. was fantastic. We do have a couple more episodes coming out with that crew nice. uh, through November and I think uh, almost into December. So we'll get a little bit more of that tabaxi fun going on. <laughs> yes. But they, were, yes. they were a blast. So let's, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the Tomb of Annihilation itself. Tabaxi, right, keep coming up as a big thing. Celeste, what were some some elements of the story that uh, that you really liked and wanted to bring in to Venture Maidens that you can talk about? I know we, we don't want to necessarily spoil, but keep in mind, this is airing, this episode of the podcast will air after your, your products are out there. But at the same time, if people haven't listened to it yet, we won't spoil. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure you've all listened to my um, podcast of of annihilation course. episode by this point because mm-hmm. you know you're big fans, right? <laughs> listen, but, here's here's for, what I'm going to say. If you haven't, <laughs> turn this episode off right now and go listen to Venture Man. Yeah, go do what that and then finish it. It'll okay. be great. Yeah, yeah. So for me, because it was it was really fun because Greg, you know, proposed or we all kind of got the idea. We picked parts of the book that we wanted to do and then run with for our own individual like one shots or campaigns or segments. So I waited until I heard what everybody else was doing. And everybody was sort of like around the port Nyanzaru kind of jungle area. And I'm like, well, you know what? Nobody's done this yet. I'm going to jump to chapter five and do one of the freaking dungeons, which was a (laughs) terrible. (laughs) I mean, no, it was it was a lot of fun. But like (laughs) that our episode is a hot barrel of fun and strange choices <laughs> um like most D. gorgeous yeah, I wording just, i great. would like to know what greg thinks after listening to <laughs> I would love we just greg if you're listening <laughs> yeah we just took that dungeon and did it wrong if you can do a dungeon wrong in dungeons and Dragons, which you can but it was a lot of fun and so that in particular i wanted to explore that part of the book because it is a little bit further back a little bit more intimidating and i'm like oh let's throw it in for a one shot like whatever yes. so it's probably one of the 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 riskier topics uh, that we just so hopefully it plays out that's, See, awesome. that's okay. good though <laughs> because if people are listening to these podcasts they listen to all the time and are so used to everyone, quote unquote, nailing it a lot because of editing and stuff. And then you throw an episode where all these people for this big event go off the rails. And then they they'll do. know that even on their home <laughs> games that that's OK. That's right. So yeah. It does have a we're, positive uh, message to it. We're hoping Absolutely. for that. <laughs> I can't wait fun for you all to hear it. A lot of that. Fun is the only thing that matters. <laughs> Joe, what did you pull out of the book for your game? What what kind of um, kind of things were you digging on? So I, I don't know. I, I read through the whole book and I decided, that, you know, after everyone was kind of giving away what they were doing on the island, I decided to um, 
there was a lot of stuff in the book that goes on around the island in the seas around the island. So I kind mm -hmm. of did a twist on the actual journey to Chult. Oh, um, nice. So they're on a ship and they run into a bunch of issues. And the end of our episode uh, ends with them landing on the beach of Chult, kind of lost in the jungle. So, um, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff with dragon turtles and mm -hmm. terra folk that are in there. Uh, so, so yeah, I basically wanted to do kind of like a seafaring theme. That's it, awesome that you're saying that right now for my blog post tomorrow, I am designing a Megalodon and it's zombie nice. version for fifth edition yes. uh, to share with people <laughs> to use in there. Uh, cause you know, you got dinosaurs, why not have a big giant shark too, right? Like might as well. Will it be like the T-Rex that disgorges zombies? Uh, yeah, Will the I'm Megalodon disgorge like zombie, zombie piranha? piranha? Out of its mouth. There we know? go. Yeah. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> so are there, and I think I know the answer to this one, uh, are there also more, we, we heard about the DMs game, but are there crossover appearances uh, and, and more synergy happening? I believe the answer is yes, based on Celeste's uh, Venture Maiden's calendar. That, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that Google calendar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely, we definitely decided to continue on. So, like I said, like our episode ends at the beginning of the beach. But I talked to, we had uh, Brittany from Venture Maidens and and Will Jones from a kind of role play on, um, and they both were totally into like continuing this on for a few more episodes. So, past this week of podcast and of annihilation, we will definitely be putting some more episodes out on our feed. That's really really cool. Uh, Josh, what about you? So, so we heard a little bit about Tabaxi, but what are you pulling out of the book other than cat people? So, for our POA adventure, we stuck into Port Nianzaru, but we went to the Executioner's Run, oh, which yes. what that essentially is is where all the criminals go to be potentially picked off. But if they make it through all the troubles and run past everything, they will get to the other side and literally climb their way to freedom. But that seemed a bit too boring for me for a single <laughs> session. So I designed an entire unique executioner's run event uh, with uh, one of the guides. And that way he can go, I know who can come with me for this adventure to go off to the other side of Chult and do some stuff, which is where the rest of the adventure will go. And I told everyone ahead of time, I'm like, hey, guys, uh, make backup characters. Because <laughs> whoever dies, the second executioner's run that's mentioned, those characters would just be from that. Uh, but I won't say who made it or not, just in case, uh, for sure. spoilers if you haven't listened. Uh, but that's kind of where we stuck. And then later on, we go into some volcanic areas. Oh, we'll, wow. we'll leave it there. Did any of you play on meat grinder mode, you know, with harder death? Uh, death saving throws that's suggested mm -hmm. by the book. We are trying to plan an event for Meat Grinder mode, just trying to get everyone oh, together nice. at the same time is a little rough, but we definitely have something in mind. Um, the thing we are planning, hopefully this will still be a thing, is Will from Encounter Roleplay and myself will co-DM a Meat Grinder game. Oh, nice. Sort of uh, similar to the one we saw in Stream of Annihilation, but with yes. uh, much better looking people. Uh, oh, so well, that's shucks. Because <laughs> you can't see us. <laughs> <laughs> we look amazing. Let me turn off my camera here for a second. Yeah. For those your imaginations make us. That's I'm like a young George Clooney for those listening. That's, I'm like an true. old George Clooney. That's very old. <laughs> yeah, I'm any age George Clooney, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's this evolution of George Clooney on my screen right now, actually. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> so, Lauren, what about you? What did you pull out of the book? What, what, what kind of things were you liking? I was super lucky where Dungeon Drunks was ending a big story arc right mm -hmm. around the time that this was going to happen, that we were going to be recording and releasing this episode. So I was really taken. I am a big fan of Aarakocra. And there is a whole bunch, <laughs> there's a whole group of Aarakocra in this book that make me super happy. And I immediately said, yep, dibs, dibs, dibs on this tribe and something else nearby. And we were very lucky to have a Nassim from Venture Maidens because all the Venture Maidens went out and ventured to other podcasts. It was kind of awesome. Everybody on yeah, here had sage. a Venture Maiden yeah. on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Right. Yeah. I was we really all, aggressive about we all went uh, making dibs. friends. <laughs> oh, it was it was wonderful. So I we were super lucky we were able to do a it's a standalone episode, but it is 
in Dungeon Drunks canon with our normal players. <laughs> so Absolutely. if you listen to the episode, it all makes sense. And we bring on Nassim as, as her uh, wonderful special guest who all my players fell in love with, both her and her character. And so they all want her back. And they go... Uh, they actually end up getting teleported to Chult thanks to an Aarakocra friend of theirs, <laughs> and they take care of a little adventure, and then they go back. So oh, wow. uh, in in canon in my game right now, because they, they play in Faerun, they could go back to Chult and things could happen, but for the moment, that was just a little standalone adventure, and they got a fun item out of it and i think nasim's character got away with a lot of platinum so if that <laughs> character shows up anywhere else i'm sorry oh boy. <laughs> that's me that's not me <laughs> that's gonna excellent. start complaining i don't give her enough gold oh my god <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to spend it on anyway when you're that's in the no, barrel of okay. <laughs> no. oh, oh, I thought no. that was a Benjamin's quip. That's true. No. <laughs> Not like I'm there okay. aren't, you know, dinosaurs to buy. Uh, or uh, no. More dinosaurs to buy. <laughs> to Listen, not in chapter five. There's no dinosaurs in chapter five <laughs> to buy. Just to true. get eaten by. <laughs> no dungeon yeah. shops. <laughs> Listen, you need to save up all of this gold so that the characters that die during chapter five, when the rest of the, the characters succeed, then you have gold to bring them back. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got to be optimistic about, you know, the meat grinder. Right. Right. Yeah. Provided their soul doesn't get devoured before you. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Just roll really well. That's all. Just <laughs> roll really well. Just do better. You can all do that. That's fine. <laughs> Just do better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. There's more Tabletop Babble coming up. At the center of the great forest, on an island in the sky, the crow, deer, and wolf clans have been training three fearsome warriors from infancy for one purpose, to protect and serve the goddess of Estra. Uh, so how exactly are we going to do that? Protecting the goddess, I mean. Ugh... Fran lies down. Uh, Laika can't answer because she's too busy sniffing both your butts. <gasps> okay, back off, Wolf Clan. This disturbs me, uh, but not to worry, I will instantly repress it. These are the guardians of the goddess. Laika, the tiefling paladin who hails from the Wolf Clan. Nobody's touching one beautiful hair on the goddess's head as long as I'm around. Corbin, a human druid from the Crow Clan. Human! I'm a crow! And Fran, a water genasi wizard of the deer clan. So, like, is there a way to quit this job or what? This unlikely trio will venture forth into an unfamiliar world without knowing who can be trusted against the powerful dark force stalking the steps of their goddess and threatening the future of their world. Tune in every second Monday to Dames and Dragons, a 5th edition D&D actual play podcast. See you then! All right, back to the show. So I want to ask you all, uh, and Celeste, I'll start with you because I know where your opinion lies on this, but our audience may not. In the canon of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons adventures, uh, where do you place Tomb of Annihilation? If you were to give a a mini review of the adventure, where does it fall for you? Is it the best ever? Is it your second favorite because your heart belongs to Strahd? There are no wrong answers, so... Uh, how about you, Celeste? I, I think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. Yeah, I I think, I mean, my heart does belong to Strahd, how dare you? But um, <laughs> I think this was a really, really great mm-hmm. addition to the Wizards canon that happened right now. I don't think it could have come at a better time. I think it's a great, unique, diverse world that was sorely needed in the canon, um, especially with Curse of Strahd coming out and, you know, a remake of an older game, like... This whole Tomb of Annihilation shows that wizards can do some great new stuff and put it out there. And it's an exciting, totally different cultural climate, different, like, literal climate uh, with a lot of fun new things. I think this was very well timed. I love everything in it. Really excited about it. Uh, I wish I had more time to play in it more. Um, <laughs> is my only my only qualm. <laughs> Of course, of course. Yeah, isn't that always the way? Uh, I feel the same way, too. Um, and I I couldn't agree more with you about, like, th- it's so uh, different. And I hear a lot of people say, like, oh, well, it's a rehash of Tomb of Annihilation <laughs> or Tomb of uh, Horrors. And it's so not. 
Like it's it, this, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, go read yeah. Tomb of Horrors. It has no story. There's like zero yeah. story in that adventure. Well, even the the ultimate dungeon in this game, and then versus Tomb of Horrors, it's like it's not. It's totally mm-hmm. a different mechanic as you're going through. Like, yes, they may both be dangerous dungeons, but the mechanics, especially with the tokens and the spirit, like totally a different experience. Yeah. There's both flipping hard. Like that. That's yeah. the only thing. It's <laughs> that's yeah. the only thing. Exactly. This, yeah. this revamped version feels a little more fair. It, yes. it doesn't feel yes. nearly as random, nearly as, hey, there's three doors in front of you and there's zero way <laughs> to figure out which door to go into. And if you open up the wrong door, you just die. And two of them are wrong. Mm-hmm. Pick one. Like, yeah. <laughs> this adventure, some people are going to say it softens those edges. I say it makes it realistic that your characters could actually survive if you are smart and prepared. You could still completely die a horrible, gruesome mm-hmm. death, but, you know, <laughs> that then that's your own fault. <laughs> I think this is very customized, too. Like, I love reading through the book, and I've been actually running, been running it play-by-post game for oh, a nice. few buddies of mine through this module. Um, and the, the stuff that they've encountered in the book, it's kind of like bare-bones skeleton outline of, here's this city, and here are these places in it. Um, but we have been able, I've been able to, like, it's so creative with the things uh, that that uh, are outside of the book, just kind of that pop up into my head and pop up um, as the players go through. They've just have been having a full, absolute blast um, exploring the land of Chilton. There's so much to do. There's so many cool places and interesting locations that Wizards put in there. Um, it really is like endless amounts of fun, endless hours of fun that you can explore the island. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so true. There's this whole... You could go sort of play through the adventure's main story, and then you've got all these other places you could go on the island, uh, which are really, really great. Uh, and if you if you want to even check out more, the DMs Guild Adepts program just put out a bunch of stuff. And a guy named Will Doyle, who actually helped write the hardcover adventure... Um, put out a whole expansion for the city of Mesro, um, which mm-hmm. I won't give too much away there, but Mesro is where mm-hmm. some stuff happens, and he drew this, like, super beautiful map and uh, has all of these crazy zombie dinosaurs and stuff in there. So uh, so that can be really fun, too, if you want added content for your players. Also, uh, turtles, the turtle package. That's right. That's yeah. right. The turtle right. package. Don't forget about the turtles. Charity and turtles i mean come on <laughs> that's oh man that is so good yeah the turtle package is incredible and will also actually worked on that he also did the maps for that so definitely definitely check that out so where does it fall where does it fall for you lauren like where it does tomb of annihilation fall in the fifth edition adventures for you i'm gonna have to say it's tied for me with storm king's thunder and it's only tied both of them What I love about it is they both have a a chapter dedicated Mm -hmm. to here's a section of the world and all kinds of random (laughs) pineappling stuff that's going on. Go have fun. You know, it it helps Mm -hmm. with games that you when your players just want to go out and go do random stuff. It gives you just every little tiny town on the map and places you've never heard of. And it says, go have fun. Go find stuff to do. The only reason that I don't that the Tomb of Annihilation uh, doesn't completely surpass it for me is because Tomb of Annihilation does have a ticking clock, whereas Storm King's Thunder you can kind of play around in that world for as long as you want. <laughs> um, and I think both of those are um, amazing choices. Mm-hmm. For me personally, I, I like being able to just play around in the world as long as my players want to. But yeah, that that chapter makes me so happy whenever I've been getting you know, that that's been I think it's a fifth edition thing mm-hmm. that they've made sure that they just have an entire chapter of here's the world and all kinds of crazy stuff to do and it it's so good <laughs> also a tribe of Aarakocra so maybe actually now that I've said Aarakocra <laughs> <laughs> let me think about that some more but it's definitely if it's if it's not tied with with Storm King's Thunder maybe Aarakocra puts it a bit ahead but yeah it's it's super fun. It's it's totally different than uh, anything that's come before. Not just because of the landmass, but because of all of the different stuff you can encounter, all the different things you can do, and 
I think for long-term campaigns, it leaves open some very interesting ideas if your players don't go to Chult, if they don't solve the death curse, mm -hmm. uh, whether you know that's something that they're interested in doing or not, just that ramification on the world that there are now people, beings out there of immense power and, and wealth who are gone, never coming back, not mm -hmm. had a chance to come back. That's a power vacuum that I find fascinating. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to explore that, <laughs> even if my players don't explore any more of Chult. That's true. That's I, I mean, I think this, just based on that mechanic and that story point of the Death Curse, it makes it so much more interesting. Uh, because there is, and, and if you've been playing D&D &D for any length of time, you've heard the jokes of like, Oh yeah, well we'll just you know we'll just bring that person back, or it's not a big deal if you die, you know. And and this sort of changes the game in that way, and does make death that much more meaningful within the game. But also says this is a world where this was once possible, and now is not. And what kind of chaos would that cause? Is is just a fascinating question that groups can now answer at the table, which I think is great. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Uh, how about you, Josh? Uh, where do you place Tomb of Annihilation in the canon of 5th edition D&D adventures? So, for me, uh, anyone who's listened to the actual podcast, we are running Curse of Strahd. Mm -hmm. And that is the only module that we have ever played for 5th edition. That's the first one. It's also the oh, first yeah. thing I've ever DM'd and first module I've ever DM'd. So, <laughs> right. that's like my core point. Uh, and what I liked about Strahd, I will get back to Tomb of Annihilation in a minute, is it seemed like I have a set world that is within the confines of this space. There is a story there to explore. And I have like directions and like quest markers. I'm like, okay, we're going to go A, B, C, end up in the castle. They're all going to die. Then we'll go to another one. <laughs> Tomb of Annihilation <laughs> is relatively similar in the way that it is a confined space. You start out A, but the B, C, D, you're all going to die at the end, is more B is just everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you can decide what would work for your group on a grand scale. You don't necessarily need to go from Barovia to Velaki to Kresk. You can go anywhere in the jungle, make up whatever you want. It's a jungle of anything. And that's a really cool aspect to this module is it allows DMs to get creative and dig into something that they can personalize for their group, which is also really cool for podcasters and streamers because I've heard uh, before and I, I'm of the same mindset at times that if people are running modules and you haven't played it yet, you don't want to spoil it for yourself. So if you're able to play a module that is completely customized, which is kind of a contradictory term but it's possible here then you're you would be able to share it with your audience better and create something that is unique to you mm -hmm. so i like tomb of annihilation for that uh in comparison to strahd i personally very similar to lauren have a very defined way i kind of like to play so curse of strahd is a way that i can go i'm going to prep my session this is what i'm going to do i want to concentrate on the story and on the characters and the strahd story is gorgeous mm -hmm. so i i'm going to concentrate on there that's probably where i would rank it i would rank stride a little bit higher but two of annihilation does some very unique things and both are able to be plugged into anywhere two of annihilation it's an island or peninsula that can just be anywhere brovia you just go hello mist hello fog and you just are in the world and now you're stuck there <laughs> the hello so, darkness my old friend <laughs> yep exactly you just go boop and you're in there uh which is what i did when i started the game i started them with lost mine of fandelver for the first 15 minutes and then i went you're in barovia now good luck guys uh so <laughs> that was cool. a nice fun way to go well, joke's on you. You made these characters for this game, so now you're doing this one. Um, so Brovia had that aspect that you can just thrust it on them. From what Lauren was saying earlier, though, you can use it for that one plot point of everyone who's died before, you know, you're now in trouble. If your party has people who has died before, 
you are now forcing them into a ticking clock where their character will die. And that is a great way to hook your characters into a world because they're saving themselves. Not even saving the world anymore, although that is a plot point. They are saving their own butts. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we, we can go for so, asses here. Asses are fine. <laughs> asses is great. Okay. Save asses your own are ass. the line. That's right. That's right. Ass on the line. Just draw Sweet. a line right down the middle of ass and we're... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yes, That's, yeah. that's usually where they belong. Uh, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I would say Strahd is a little bit higher than Two of Annihilation for me, but I, by all means, enjoy the module. Sure. I love that the two of us had essentially the exact opposite reaction about, like, I wanted big open expands, give me lots of crazy stuff that my players can go do and just choose stuff. And you went, I like confined spaces. I like being able to have a world and blah, blah, blah. And we both love the same module for completely different yes, reasons. Exactly. <laughs> that is what makes it so good is it's good versatile sign. to the DM. <laughs> Great. Yep. Yeah, yep. there really is something for everybody. And you know, um, Joe, we heard you sort of what you love about it within the Wizards Fifth Edition canon. Where do you place Tomb of Annihilation? Yeah, I mean, I'm coming in. I'm coming in at the same in the same boat as Josh is. Um, the only thing I DM'd as far as Fifth Edition goes was the starter set was Lost Minds of Phandelver. Oh, so that's a great adventure. I don't have too much yeah. to compare it to, so I'm just a big fan of. Having an, an entire adventure book that I can kind of read off of to create this uh, this adventure, and like Josh was saying, you know, you have a you have a point A and you have a point Z or whatever, and you have all, all this stuff in the beginning. Uh, in in the book, point A doesn't even have to start at the same place. I know True. in the book, mm-hmm. you're like told by this woman to go to the island, but um, you know, with our with our episode, they are on a ship to the island for some other reason. And they get lost, and I'm going to have them kind of discover what's happening on the island without knowing. Mm, so they're nice. going for this totally different reason, and all of a sudden, all this stuff is happening with zombies, and they've never seen this before, and they're going to discover what the main issue is and what the impact on the greater world is going to be and how they're going to kind of combat that themselves. So, uh, you know, once again, like I said, I think it just opens it up to so much creativity and so many things that you can do with the module and and going away from it even to uh, kind of spark, spark, you know, more interest in your players. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> but like I said, I don't have too much to compare it to in my own experience. Well, I think it's safe to say Podcast of Annihilation is a hit. Uh, people love it. We're going to be doing it for whatever the next thing is, right? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll demand it of Wizards of the Coast, if nothing else. Um, but it sounds like uh, it's been great for them as well. What would you like to see in the next storyline? Or maybe, as Wizards of the Coast insiders, you all now know what is coming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't say visually what happens, but all four of us were just like, oh, oh, oh my God, wow. All the things. Um, <laughs> oh, things, things, all the things and stuff and things. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say if I had to pick one thing, I want it all. Give me all of it. Just <laughs> all of it. All of it. Give me Xanthar's guide to everything. Give me another campaign. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> yeah, well, really, I want the source book to Kira Sabal and Eric Ogre. Just give me all, give me all the bird people. Uh, <laughs> I, if I had to pick one thing for them to put out, I don't necessarily want another big giant campaign. As much as, um, as a DM, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Now, mm. I I run a lot of my games on the Sword Coast in Faerun. I know a lot of other podcasts out there do do their own world so it might not be as helpful to a lot of people but for me because once again i like being able to give my players hey here's the world and here's a whole bunch of random uh pineapple stuff that you can go do Mm -hmm. the sword coast adventures guide is is a beautiful fountain of information to draw inspiration from as a dm and it is just plot hook after plot hook after plot hook written like a history book mixed with a bit of a travel guide plus a few extra backgrounds. So I, I kind of want something else like that. You know, the, the Dale lands adventurer's guide. I want, I want more meat that I can flavor. Nice. Love the metaphor. That was great. <laughs> there. I'm going to, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. That's, that's how eloquent I'm going to be. Need more oregano. Thank you for having me. Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 
I've got to, I mean, I'm a huge fan of like AD and D is what I like learned on mm-hmm. and like all these worlds like Dark Sun and Dragonlance and Hollow World. I would just love some kind of it would be so cool to see an adventure outside of favor and jump in. I don't, I don't think probably the timing isn't right. I know. And I don't want everything to get too complicated. They're doing a great job with marketing now, but like, I would love to see something there. And if not that for right now, a player material, um, I'm a huge wizard classist. (laughs) I'm all about the wizards. And I just, I want to see something like complete arcana that they had for three, five, where Mm. it's like an expanded spell Mm. list or more options for how arcane casters can differentiate more like background options, more specializations. I think people are clamoring for more specializations within their classes. So I'd love to see books expanding specifically on that as a resource. If I don't get my whole other campaign setting, <laughs> well, that's what I would some of that in, in Xanthar's guide, right? Yes, I mean, that's yes. a I lot think of the so. other, our arcana stuff is getting thrown I, into Xanthar's guide. Yeah, I definitely guide, hope so. so because my, my little wizards just, just want to be so much more creative <laughs> than they can okay. right now. Oh. Also check out Celeste Elminster's Guide to Magic. It's like the number Ooh. one seller on the DMs Guild Next Now. It's put out by M.T. Black, and it literally doubles the number of spells that are in the player's handbook. Like, he basically That's wrote a sad. whole second spell section, and then he's got all kinds of other, you know, like a thousand and one wizard tower names and uh, uh, <laughs> ways, like... Well- yeah. There you go. I, my problem has been solved. Just give me Dark Center Hollow World. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see this. Oh, you just too. want to play a Thrykreen wizard. That's I, all you want to do. Okay, <laughs> I get it so now. Cool. It's Brooks Lest. Some people are bug people. Some people are bug people. It's just, you know. <laughs> no, no judgment, only love. <laughs> giant bugs, Thank giant you. birds. It's all great. <laughs> so what about you guys uh, the men what do the men want to see from wizards of the coast <laughs> i don't know i, I think uh, i think maybe uh, lauren was kind of hitting on this earlier but what, maybe like a what if campaign like what if the people that go to chult don't solve the death curse you know what what massive effect would that have on the world and what kind of other problem could come up uh, because of that so i think that maybe that would be interesting almost like a sequel to to uh, you know, Tomb of Annihilation. Oh, nice! I just I just love Tomb of Annihilation. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always thought that too. Like, I'd love to see even a a, f- a full book with just some sort of advice about what ifs. Like, what if Tiamat does show up at the end of Rise of Tiamat and you know destroys the Sword Coast? What if? Uh, the elemental evil princes get out and, uh, you know, yeah. get up to their things. Or the demons take over the Underdark. Like, I'd love to see just a book of, like, uh, worst case scenarios for like all of those stories. Like an apocalyptic story <laughs> Apocalyptic yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be sweet. Yeah, I guess I just want Dark Sun. Uh, <laughs> there you go. See, that's what I'm just saying. Once again, bug people. <laughs> what about you, Josh? Want. Are you are uh, you hankering for anything? For me, I mean, I haven't gotten to this point yet, but I know it's still lacking. Is the lack of anything that goes into the you know higher levels mm-hmm. because everything starts at a level one, it goes to either ten or fifteen or twelve or whatever. There's nothing for the players who got to that point. So it's either you finish that adventure and go it's homebrew now or you incredibly scale the other modules to be able to fit it but there's nothing for or at least that i know of um for those players who finish these modules to go out and do that's already written in a book maybe if horde of the dragon queen as you were saying like what if tiamat came back Mm -hmm. and that's the way that they sequel it back in of like hey you know that module you did a bunch of you know years ago it's back and it's worse, so go fix the problems that could have come up from that. Um, something along those lines to keep the, those characters engaged uh, without having to go homebrew if you don't really want to run those. Yeah, that would, that would be great to see something uh, high level. Or even the continuation of like, you know, you could even, if you didn't want to destroy the Sword Coast, uh, you could say like, mm-hmm. Tiamat's, you know, you stopped her from coming into this world. Now go into the nine hells and kill her. There you right? go. And that could be another way you could do it. Give, you give them yeah. 
lots of options. And then you could have like a nice chapter about all of the different adventure locations in the Nine Hells. So, you know, Lauren would be yeah. happy with uh, yeah, there you go. The, the various places. <laughs> and then can we go. can publish a new book of Vile Darkness and it'll all be great. <laughs> with tons of wizard specializations. Would be and we can best. just be 3-5 again. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, please, uh, wizards, just make us four happy. Just do that. Work on that, please. <laughs> uh, well, I think that is going to do it. Uh, but before we go, uh, let's talk about where people can find you on the internet. Uh, why don't we start with you, Celeste? All right. Well, if you want to check out the Venture Maidens podcast, the best way to get all of our information is go to www.theventuremaidens.com. You can find our social media links there, our YouTube page, our Twitch live stream schedule, uh, our podcast. Of course, you can also find us on iTunes, everywhere podcasts are free, or talk to me personally at C. Conowich on Twitter. Excellent. Yes, check out the Venture Maidens. They are an amazing podcast. Uh, one that I'm um, proud to have here on the Don't Split the Podcast Network. And Lauren, where can people find you? Well, Dungeon Drunks can be found wherever good podcasts can be found. On the iTunes, on the Stitcher, on the Google something. So just look for Dungeon <laughs> Drunks. <laughs> you can also go to our website, which is dungeondrunks.com and there will be a link there for an RSS feed if you'd like to be super old school we are on the Twitter at Dungeon Drunks so you can get us there don't quite have too much more social media because I don't have the time for that much social media uh, so <laughs> go to our website subscribe to our podcast we'll just send you stuff automatically you can also find me on Twitter at OboCrazy you can also go to my website which is OboCrazy.com because branding so find find me or find our podcast or find any of the lovely people. And, and then also subscribe to the Venture Maidens because they're awesome. And subscribe to Taking <laughs> Initiative. It's a, yeah, subscribe to all of us. Go to <laughs> wizards.com uh, slash POA, as I think what the official thing is. And uh, just subscribe to all 10 of Wizards.com forward slash POA. Thank you. There we go. Um, go there, subscribe to all 10 of those podcasts and just listen to us all and you don't need anything else. <laughs> yes, very true. Very true. Excellent podcast. Uh, and you'll have a story for days, which will be incredible. Uh, how about you, Joe? Where can people find you? Sure. Yeah. My personal uh, Twitter is at Joe the DM. I can't believe that was available when I uh, started that. <laughs> so that was awesome. sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but more importantly, our podcast is called You Meet in a Tavern. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and all social media. We have Facebook page. We've got uh, Instagram. Apparently, I do have time for that, but probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on uh, our handle at all those places is so Y-M-I-A Tavern. Um, let's see. All the podcast apps that you mentioned before, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, we're hosted through Podbean. So thanks out and subscribe and, uh, looking forward to having you. Excellent. And Josh, where can people find you? Uh, me personally on Twitter, you can find me at Xyroxis the beard, which is at X I R O X I S the beard. Um, yeah, I picked an easy one. It's great. Uh, you can find taking initiative where you find podcasts at taking initiative on Twitter at ti underscore pod and you can find us and the network that we're on the spark network uh which is the one that we created which has nerds on roll as well uh that is the spark dot network you can find all our shows and where you can find us and descriptions and cast and crew and all that stuff all over there um besides from that the podcast of annihilation you can find on the dungeon delve rss feed which is the wizards of the coast actual play uh feed and if you want something for me that is not exactly D&D related, I am also the online finishing editor for the show Blue Bloods. So once that starts up this year, you'll be able to hop on and just see the stuff that I did. That's awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining me on Tabletop Babble today. And I hope you will come back when the podcasts of whatever the next storyline may be. <laughs> podcasts of Dark Sun. That's right. Yes. There you yeah. go. You'll j the podcasts of more <laughs> wizard specializations. Uh, so. Yes. <laughs> so ready. <laughs>
Wow, that was a great interview. These people are amazing. You know what? They're so amazing, you should go give them a five-star rating on iTunes to let them know how much you love them. And while you're there, you can give us at Tabletop Babble a five-star rating on iTunes and help other people find the show. If you leave us a five-star review, I will read it out loud verbatim. You can make me say anything you want. Anything, anything at all when you leave a five-star review. Today's five-star review comes from Why Do They Make Us Come Up With a Name? Uh, And the review is entitled Very Insightful. Uh, The review reads, James is a great interviewer who asks the right questions to get the most meat out of a topic. The guests he has on are incredibly insightful. Great topics spanning a wide range. Wow, thank you so much. Why did they make us come up with a name? I really appreciate the review. You out there in listener land can go make me say anything you want. So check it out. All right, everybody, you can find me on Twitter at James and Jocasso, and you can read all about the amazing game design things that I am doing over at worldbuilderblog.me. It is really fun. There's some exciting stuff that's been going on with me this summer. Uh, the DMs Guild Adepts products. There is going to be an Adventurers League adventure coming from me soon, and more stuff than I can't yet talk about, but is coming, so go check that out. And I also wanted to let you know that if you love actual play podcasts, we have a bunch on the Don't Split the Podcast Network. First, you should obviously check out Venture Made and Celeste Conowich was here talking about it. They are an amazing actual play. So, so good. Then we've got DSPN Presents where we play uh, a bunch of different one-shots, different systems, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. We've got a great uh, fifth edition D&D aquatic game run by Rich Howard. We had Craig Campbell, the maker of Murders and Acquisitions, come on and run that game. So, so much more. Star Trek Adventures, Dusk City Outlaws. Check it out. And then we also have a great actual play podcast called Dames and Dragons. They are really funny, delightful, just super charming to listen to. So check out all of those great podcasts at don't split the podcast network.com. Tabletop Babble is part of Don't Split the Podcast Network. Thanks to Rudy Basso for founding it with me. Our theme music, which you're listening to right now, was provided by Battle Bards. Remember that RPGs are like sex. Always make sure you have protection. Hey everybody, one more thing I wanted to tell you all about Prepared. What is Prepared? It's an amazing product from Cobalt Press. And it's two books now. You've got Prepared and Prepared 2, both written by amazing game designer John Sawatsky, who writes these incredible one-shot adventures that you can drop into your game. So when your players go crazy and go off the rails and go someplace you weren't expecting, bam, you can hit them with a goblin war wagon. Bam, you can hit them with a dragon lair. You can hit them with so much awesome. I have both of these products and I use them all the time. They are incredible and amazing. Head on over to the Cobalt Press store to search for Prepared and Prepared 2. You will be so happy to have them in your DM Go bag. They are just so, so helpful, so clever, uh, so inventive. You are really, really going to love these encounters. I use them all the time. They need such little prep. In fact, a lot of times I run them without prep at all. I'm reading from them for the first time as I'm running them, and every Everything goes great. So check it out. Prepared and now prepared to over at coboldpress.com or wherever great RPG products are sold.